Intelligence Network. Like you, we're wondering what Web 2.0 can mean for our business and for our customers, decision makers in healthcare. Podcast, wikis, blogs, video, tagging. Welcome to the world of Web 2.0. With its cutting edge communication tools that have been embraced by Gen X and Gen Y and growing more popular with other generations each passing day. You've no doubt heard of MySpace, Facebook, and YouTube, social networking sites that connect billions of consumers. Today there are entire sites devoted to the sharing of health related information. Take for example, dailystrength.org. This site offers more than 500 online support groups for every health issue and life challenge. You can get advice from over a quarter of a million supporters, including research on the latest drugs, treatments, and alternative therapies. Because your patients and members are plugged into these tools, you should be too. What's the business case for building user-generated content into your communication strategy? Think about it. If you buy a book online today, you can immediately write a review and share your opinion with others, millions of others actually. These same kinds of comparisons and ratings are being generated right now about your types of products. Health insurance plans, drugs, maybe even the quality of a doctor's care. Why not be part of the dialogue? We've talked with healthcare companies who are seeing unexpected and often dramatic results with Web 2.0. Take for example the Mayo Clinic. Well, it was actually in August of 2005 that we had these MP3 files that we were creating for our medical edge daily 60-second radio program, and almost on a lark, we said, well, why don't we just make that available as a podcast, because we have these MP3 files. They're on the web already. If we can get it listed in iTunes, let's just see if there's any value to it. To our surprise, and this may not, you know, this likely wouldn't happen to everybody else who would try this, but the folks at Apple saw that we had a podcast and decided to feature it on their front page. This was back uh, a few months before video iPods came out, and so there was a little less of uh, less competition in that way. We found out somewhat to our surprise that we had been featured there, and, and we got in the list of the top subscribed podcasts because of that featuring. We increased our average daily site visits from to this particular site that we had set up for our uh, Medical Edge radio by over 100% uh, versus the previous month when we hadn't had the podcast. The downloads went up uh, by 8,200% in the month uh, between August of 05 and October of 05. And this was without any other promotion other than iTunes. And UAB Health System in Alabama, which could not have imagined the YouTube community's reaction to its videos. The traffic and feedback both are incredible, and I'm sorry that we didn't do it sooner. Um, we had talked about, you know, we had spent a lot of time developing our own video site and, and then trying to promote it within our site and in our marketing efforts. And with the growth of uh, video sites out there, YouTube being the king among them, uh, we decided to give it a try. And uh, the numbers have just been un unbelievable. I mean, as you know, um, there have been 50 million visitors monthly to YouTube. And we've received um, videos posted since November 14th. We've had 31,000 views on YouTube. Our UAB emergency room wrap alone received 11,377. 20 people commented and 84 have favorited that particular video, and five have embedded links, which means they have posted our video on their YouTube site. Kaboom! We're the UAB emergency room, and we treat every single patient from the womb to the tomb. And consider the experience of the Medical University of South Carolina, where several hundred of its physicians are actively contributing to podcasts and videos that are available on its own site, as well as iTunes and YouTube. Many organizations are fraught with 
problems of trying to engage one's physicians and clinical staffs in marketing and other sort of activities, there was an instant synergy with our physicians in the sense that not only could we create material that had marketing value, but we also could create content that would be target improvement and health literacy and just general knowledge related to specific diseases and conditions. So our physicians readily adopted that and became a, really a, a, the corner stone to us building a program like this. So they're very tightly integrated with us. They work in order to help develop the content with us. And really for the first time, at least in a marketing world, we actually are really working one-on-one with physicians to develop content that maybe serves multiple purposes. But like most businesses, I'm judged on the return on investment. I have to fill my beds and my outpatient program. So, you know, it allows them to actually be part of creating of a content or marketing strategy and program that actually can deliver on those promises of generating revenue for the organization. How much should you invest in Web 2.0? Return on investment, always a difficult topic, but these companies are saying that their initiatives are allowing them to be seen and heard in new markets. So take the first step. Visit these sites, create accounts, hone your social networking skills, and talk to your staff members who actively use these sites. That's what we've done here. And then, jump in. We have, this is our first video created in-house. Check back to www.hin.com to see what we've learned from this Web 2.0 experience. I'm Melanie Matthews with the Healthcare Intelligence Network.